If you took your intro to web design with me in MISM 3307, then you'll remember the project that you're looking at here. This is where we took the Declaration of Independence, the United States Constitution, and the amendments to the Constitution, and we just created three HTML pages on the Constitution file. We had links to all of the articles of the Constitution, so there's just seven articles. So the buttons would take you to those articles. We had a floated system of signers at the bottom so that you could read the signers in columns. Navigate back to the top in the Declaration, scrolling down to the bottom. You can see that we had all of the Declaration of Independence and we had uh, a big long list element and then we had some nested list elements and then we had our signers in columns at the bottom and in the amendments to the Constitution we just had a straight list of all of the amendments to the Constitution and we didn't even make an effort to make links to each of these because it would fill up the term just trying to get all of this built now we also tried to make all of this responsive in week 11. So here in this light version of Chrome, I'm going to click on our ellipses over here and come down to more tools and then select the developer tools. Now you can come to the developer tools this way or you could just use the keyboard command control shift I. Now, whenever you do this, it opens up a control panel at the bottom, which allows you to see your elements and the console and when we start working with JavaScript we'll use the console more. We have a link here to sources. This will show you the images that are included and stuff like that. Come back to elements. Now there is a great feature here in the Chrome browser and I think Firefox probably has the same kind of feature. It's called a toggle device toolbar. You can hit Control shift m to get it and when I click this it opens up the page in a different view and then up here at the top you can see that there is a drop down arrow beside the word responsive and then we can see the width and height attributes right here of what we're looking at. We can see here the zoom percentage that we're looking at. We can tell whether or not we're working online or just whatever and notice this talks about mid tier and low tier mobile and that's mostly to do with performance issues and how fast somebody's internet access is. And then lastly, there is a button here for rotating uh, for devices like iPhones and iPads that will rotate. Now, since it's in responsive mode right now, I can come down and grab the little resize handle right here on the right side and, and see how responsive the web page and where the web page breaks. You can see the numbers changing up in the middle, right beside the word responsive. You can see the width values changing as I resize the viewport. You're able to see what happens as this is resized. So watch that Article 7 button right there. As I bring this down, there's going to be a point at which it breaks right there. It breaks at about 847. 847 pixels, 845, it's down here. So that becomes a break point for me. 847 would be, maybe 849 would be a break point for me because I'm looking here at the margin after Article 7 between the button and the end of the page background shading and the margin that we have over here. And that's about the same. So maybe 848, 847 pixels would be the break point that I would establish in building this page if I were doing it truly in a responsive way. The way uh, we did it in this class worked because we were using floats and we were using media queries in order to get everything to work. But when you come down to the, to the very bottom down here, then the signers just really doesn't work very well. And so we still get columns. It's just that that's not readable. It's so confusing that it's basically useless. I can spread this back out and see at what point it loses meaning. And right about, let's see, 
maybe right in here somewhere we're starting to get a little bit of meaning but notice that we're up around 700 pixels already so it's just really not a great design it, it's great for teaching how to float objects and how to use media queries and things like this it's just not great for a course in web mastering where we can get into some of the newer technologies that we're going to use this term and in the next video i'll show you how we are going to produce the same kind of sites this year but we're going to be using some newer technologies we're going to start by using flexbox and grid and then ultimately towards the end of the term we will throw in some javascript in here to to help this page look and act a lot more like a professionally designed responsive web page